folks, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at question 621, task scheduler. The way we'll be solving this problem is by actually using um, <clears throat> math instead of trying to schedule all of these um, tasks themselves. Um, if we take this particular example, uh, all we need to do is we need to be able to place them we need to be able to place A, and then we need to uh, put how many ever uh, spaces we need between them, and then we put A again, right? And we and as soon as we know which letter occurs the the most number of times, we know that that letter dictates how many intervals we actually need. So let's get started. So in this particular case, we actually need like two. Uh, cycles in between, right? So we need two gaps and then we place A again and then we place A again. And then in this case, we place, um, once we're done with all the A's, which is three, we place B and then we place B and then we place B, right? Um, and since both of them are of the same frequency, that's the reason why we need to account for both. But if there was another um, that row with lesser frequency, let's say C, you just place it in between. And it doesn't really uh, matter, but as long as we know how many times um, the maximum number occurs and how many letters occur the maximum number of times, we should be able to solve the problem. Um, so let's get started. Um, so let's actually count uh, the frequency that's required, right? So we say we initialize an int array call count and we just need to initialize that to 26 because um, <clears throat> we know that there are 26 letters and all of the letters that are given to us will be in uppercase. So it's just 26. Um, and then we iterate through all of the tasks. So for int task in tasks, um, int count, sorry. So count of um, task minus caps A. So the reason why we do task minus caps A is because every single character within, um, <clears throat> within every coding language has its own um, ASCII value. And this, if you need to look it up, it's ASCII. Um, so basically this has a particular value and the task, the letter that's given to us also has a particular value. So if you subtract A from it, um, caps A from it, it resets the value of A to zero. And the reason why we need zero is because the index starts from zero as well, right, for every given array. So that's the reason why, and we just increment it. Um, the next thing we need is we need to know uh, what is the max frequency, right? And how do we go about doing that? We can either iterate through all of the, the entire array to see which is the max, or we can just sort it. Um, array dot array dot sort and sort count and how do we since um, this method sorts everything in ascending order all we need to do is look at the max uh, value in the end so count of 25 so basically <clears throat> it's telling since we have arranged the array in an ascending order give me the max value which should be available in the last um, index and we need to know how many times this occurs, right? So let's do that. So max count, let's just uh, set that to zero, but we'll iterate through the entire array again. So for int i in count, um, if um, i is equal to max, and then we add max count plus plus. Okay, so once we have the maximum number um, of a particular character occurring and how many characters occur that many times, it's pretty simple. So it becomes in result would be equal to, so it'd be max minus one multiplied by uh, n plus one. Okay, so why is, uh, why is this, formula. Why does this work? Okay, so max minus one is basically telling you how many times 
how many intervals we actually need, right? So when we look at the first example that we set, we have a space and a space, and then we have A, we have space and space and space, and then we have A, right? So how many intervals do we actually need? The number of intervals we actually need is um, the number of times particular uh, letter occurs minus one because the gaps exist only between the letters. So that's the reason why it is um, max minus one and then n plus one. So why do we have um, uh, n plus one? It's because any time uh, there is a gap between them, you also need to include the letter itself. So this is a total number of intervals, right? So um, we have a, you have a letter and then there's a gap of two. And so basically any time the cycle occurs, it has to include itself. So that's the reason why you have to add one to it. So this will give us how many times we actually need to set up those intervals. This max count in the end is basically telling us how many letters in the end. So we see in this example that we have A and B occurring the same number of times. So this setup that we have will give us um, will give us how many times has this occurred, right? So in this case, max would be uh, three minus one, that would be two, two multiplied by, uh, multiplied by three, so that'll be six. So this will give us everything that occurs until here. So it's basically telling, okay, so this is number of times and this is number of intervals, and then it repeats the maximum number character that comes after that. So that's the reason you need maximum count and you need to add that in the end. So you might be asking what happens to the other letters. All of the other letters will fit between this gap. So that's the reason why you have to only care about like the maximum um, numbers a particular time occurs and how many letters actually occur the maximum number of times. So once you have that in the end, you would return the maximum, not that max of the interval or the tasks dot interval. And the reason why you need this is because sometimes the tasks, uh, like the interval could be like one or zero. So that's the reason why you need to like make sure that you just put tasks interval as well, just to make sure that it gives us the right result. So in this case, let's try compiling this. I think it's Aries.star. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, task. Oh, task.lent. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so the first few test cases are okay. Everything else is okay as well. Awesome. So let's talk over the space and the time complexity of the entire solution. Um, so the time complexity of the entire solution is O of N because we are iterating through the entire array and you might be asking, uh, since we're sorting it, wouldn't it be o, um, o of N log N? And the reason why it's not O of N log N, it's because um, the number that's given to us is fixed. So it will be 26 log 26. And since this is a constant, that's the reason why it comes up to O of N. Um, so that's the reason why the complexity is O of N and then the space complexity in this case is O of 1 since we are initializing an area of like fixed space. This doesn't, con this does not continue growing. So that's the reason why it's O of 1. Awesome. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I really appreciate that. Thanks so much and I'll see you folks in the next video.